The single most important thing in knowing which hero to six star is observation. So this is an impossible question to answer specifically, as I don't know who's watching this video, where you are in the game, and what your roster looks like right now. So I'll have to ask you a series of questions and try my best to give you some guidance. So the first question is this, what piece of content are you struggling with that you're currently trying to beat or get better in? This could be Abyss, Raid, Arena, Story Mode, or Hunt along with a few others, but those are the main ones. Once you can confidently answer that question, I'd like you to bring your best team to that piece of content and observe what happens. In my case, I'd like to get to the point where I can auto stage 11 of Hunt here, and for stage 11 Hunt, you really kinda want a mono water team, and currently these are my four best waters, so what I'm gonna do is just go in there, and uh, hit start and do what I eventually want to do, which is auto them, going to turn their skills on, and I'm just going to observe what happens. So already pretty quickly we can see that my frontline tank there, Basque, not only cannot survive, but it will also not be getting any healing as I don't have a healer in this team. So Basque is now dead, but from observation I can tell that he died not just because of a lack of healing, but because he's just not strong enough. Six starring him and giving him better gear would help him survive. So specifically in this stage, if your frontline goes down, you are, you're done. So in this example here, my very first step would be to get a strong frontline, whether that's Basque or another good frontline like Angelica, or some other water hero with a defensive or healing nature would be my first priority. Second priority then would probably be getting a strong healer, followed by a defense breaker, etc, etc. However, we are talking about a unit you have already invested in, up until 5 stars, and trying to decide which to 6 star. So, let's first discuss what happens when you 6 star a hero. The only thing that happens is that their attack, defense, and health increase. This means, as a general rule of thumb, DPS are gonna benefit much more from being 6 starred because attack, defense, and health are all important to them, whereas tanks and healers, it's really only defense and health that are gonna be beneficial. So in most cases where enemies can choose to attack whoever they want to, your 5-star healer or tank don't necessarily need to be 6-starred as a top priority. In fact, most would agree they are the last priority. So in my opinion, the most important 6-stars are gonna be your single target DPS. For this case, we have Luna here. She hits one enemy with all of her skills. And the reason why single target DPS is so important is because in most content, there is the boss. And once the boss is dead, everything is dead. And single target attacks naturally just do more damage than AoE attacks. So if you're a little bit further along in the game like I am with uh, quite a few six stars to choose from, then that rule kind of goes out the window, you know? I already have several single target DPS, so what's kind of like the next priority then? So moving on from the first question about the piece of content you're struggling with, we're moving on to the second question, which is what did you observe? with your team, and what happened to it. Naturally, the only way to lose is for all your heroes to die. So does that mean you should put a bunch of HP and defense on all your DPS, or take two healers and two tanks? No, because a good offense is a good defense as well. This is where buffers and debuffers come into play. I personally don't have too many of them. I have Hazel here with an attack up, Cluri here with several debuffs on her third skill, a bit of defense break on Sid. So I would say once you have a decent selection of single target DPS, maybe at least one of one element and another of a different element. Then you can move on over to like the sort of sub DPS support with the debuffs. So while in most cases their attack won't mean as much as a pure DPS, it still means more than a healer's attack in most cases. So basically if you're a newer player and you happen to pull Luna from the limited banner, she's probably gonna wanna be your first six star as she does fit all the criteria and will be the most likely candidate to get you through a lot of content that you couldn't beforehand. If you're still in the newer phase of the game still focusing on your first team and you're sticking to just four heroes for now one of them has to be a healer one of them has to be a dps and from then on it pretty much comes down to who you actually have access to for the longest time i ran two dps a sub dps and a healer the sub dps i believe was silk which has since been kind of binged However, I did see this interesting video the other day of her killing Banshee 11 with like three attacks with some artifact that I don't have access to, but um, that was pretty interesting. But once you get further and further on into the game, you're going to want to start doing the higher floors of Abyss, you're going to want to start doing uh, Raid and even Hell Raid eventually. Again, this is sort of a personal example, but uh, I was able to eventually kill Queen Azumashik, but it took several tries and even on the successful try it was insanely close and I just feel that that came down to luck. So if I wanted to make that run more stable, 
you kind of have to know what you need, you know? So in her case, you know, she's debuffing all the time when her eggs hatch and there's not a lot of healing going on. So for her, I took two healers, Destina, which can cleanse, and Hazel as some backup healing. However, recently I pulled a Katie's, which can also cleanse just like Destina. So next time I'm probably gonna take a Katie's and Destina. However, before I get a Katie's to six star, I wanna make sure I actually need her at six star. I don't wanna waste all those mats when this is currently the only thing I really need her for. I mean, it's okay to six star your whole team, you know, but you should know when it's actually necessary. So in my personal example, I'm gonna be waiting until next week and taking a Katie's here to Queen Azumashik and seeing what happens, observing. Will a Katie's not heal enough because she's only level 50 and doesn't have that extra health because her heals are scaled off of her health? If that's the case, maybe it would be worth to six star her. Is she dying too easily even with good gear? Might be worth six starring. And that right there is the main difference between healers and DPS. With healers, you really need to watch and see if they're doing enough. But with DPS, you don't need to. You don't need to question it because you know they're gonna get that attack increase. They're gonna be hitting harder and clearing stuff faster. And then we get to like the sort of odd units like Yuna, which I kind of don't really know what she is. I would definitely say she falls under the support role, but she's not really a healer. I think a lot of people use Yuna for her attack and speed buff. However, she doesn't need stats at all for that. So would someone like Yuna be a priority to six star? In my opinion, no, not really, because her main utility comes from her second skill, which doesn't require stats and doesn't depend on stats. And perhaps if built really well, she could do a lot of damage with her AOE skills here. But also if built well, six star actual DPS can do a lot too. If you're newer to the game, someone like Lorena would be a perfect six star because when you're going through story mode, there's gonna be all sorts of different elements, and Lorena is like the only free unit that won't have any real weaknesses since she is a dark type, also having a single target ultimate. So to try and get a better understanding, I'm going to go through my six stars, give my opinion on a one to 10 scale of importance if all of these were five stars. Who would I personally six star first out of my roster? So let's start with Destina. For her, I would give about a two or a three on a scale of 10. The defense and health do help her, whereas the attack does not, but also the extra HP helps doubly because of the fact her healing is based off of her HP. So I might rate it a little bit lower if that wasn't the case, but as she was my only healer and frontline, I think it's justified. Luna is easily a 10 with a single target DPS and just DPS-y skill set. Says I'd put more at like an eight. He also has a single target ult and he is quite strong. He's also quite good because of the fact he has AOE with his first skill and can help you uh, run through stages faster. So especially if you're a newer player, I'd put him actually a little bit higher, maybe nine. Ravi, I'd go with the seven or maybe eight, seven and a half, because while she definitely can do tons of damage just with her basic skill, her ultimate is a little bit underwhelming considering you need to have that fighting spirit to even use it. Regardless, her basic skill is incredibly strong. For Sid, I'd have to put him pretty high on the priority list because not only does he have a single target, pretty powerful ultimate skill, but he can also defense break and increase his own speed. So I'd have to give Sid at least a nine. Uh, Mascot Hazel, I'm gonna have to give like a one. Cause while I do personally really like Hazel, she doesn't really need that sixth star urgently. Her heals aren't that great and the Rod of Amaryllis really helps her with that, but that doesn't have to do anything with her stats. She can give the attack buff and she can heal and everything, but again, she won't be getting much attack from that sixth star there, which is what her heals are based on, and even if she did, it wouldn't scale that great. So I think Hazel is definitely not a big priority. Moving on to Lorena, also a 10 if you're newer. If you already have a few single target DPS, I'd put her a little bit lower, but if you're a newer player, she's probably the best unit to six star first because one you are gonna have her she's free and incredibly versatile you can use her literally anywhere the one drawback is it does take a lot of time to unlock her specialty change and then max out her skill tree that's gonna take a lot of work and for a newer player it would probably be a lot easier just to go grab luna from the limited banner and get her to six star. Unless you're watching this like a week from now, then rip. Fluria, I'm gonna have to put at like a three, maybe four. Again, she's not gonna be doing much damage 
unless you build her that way for some reason. She's definitely more of a support, a debuffer, a very, very good debuffer, but I would say she doesn't really need that six star more than anyone else. So to summarize, I would say single target DPS first. They're gonna help you with the hard stuff, killing those bosses faster before they can really do bad stuff to you. And then sub DPS debuffers like Sid, where he can still do a lot of damage, but also debuff. And then you'll wanna move on to your more support based debuffers and then finally healers. Unless of course your healers are the bottleneck to your team and they're the ones dying first, which would specifically be the case for Hunt Stage 11, maybe some other stuff that heavily focus the front line. But I would say in general, the healers are tanky enough at five star if you give them tanky gear. But yeah, feel free to leave your own team composition in the comments down below and ask for advice because that's about as specific as I can get without knowing each individual person's team composition. It takes a ton of resources to six star someone so I can understand being a little bit unsure about it. But yeah, make sure to tell me what you think in the comments down below. If you did happen to enjoy, a like would also be greatly appreciated. Thanks, as always, for watching. And until next time.